I'm very excited to be able to talk about this today. Um, so let's get right to it. Um, the title of my talk is uh, Clean Up Your DOM by Using the Full Power of Angular Host Elements. And let's get right to it. What is the host element? If we think about um, most other frameworks, um, creation of a component looks something like this. Um, in this case, JSX probably comes to mind, um, you know, React or maybe Solid. Um, but something almost every other framework has in common is that when you declare a component, um, what you expect it to render is exactly what it's going to render. If we take that exact same template and we put that in an Angular component, we get a little extra. We get an additional element that is wrapping the template that we expect it to have. And that is what we call the host element, which is pretty unique to Angular. Um, I think Quick is the only other framework that uses it, um, or at least something similar. But uh, more or less every other framework out there, Views, Svelte, will just render what, what you tell it to render, um, and it doesn't do any wrapping. And so this puts Angular in a special position. This has its pros and cons, but we're going to be talking about all the pros that you might be uh, missing out with this extra element. So when uh, you might get something that looks like this in other frameworks, in Angular, we do something a little bit different, which would look kind of like this. But more seriously, what we want to achieve is something like this. A little bit about me. Uh, my name is Rafael Mestre. I'm a senior software engineer at Hero Devs. Um, and I am from this wonderful island called Puerto Rico, which is in the Caribbean, uh, right here where I've uh, highlighted it. And here's a little backstory. Um, I, I always like to preface my um, my speaking engagements with a reason, like why why I like writing about a particular subject. And um, I, I was lucky enough to uh, be in multiple projects where I had a lot of free reign. Um, so if I go back to like the very first time um, I, I had a professional experience as a developer, uh, it, it was very open ended when I started out and I, I got a lot of freedom to iterate and to learn. Um, when I first got that job, um, the project manager literally told me we don't have any tasks for you, so just get the repo and start doing something that you think is worth it until we get to the next cycle where we can assign something meaningful. And so I set out to clean up the app after looking at it for the first time. And something that stood out to me is that there were a lot of templates where uh, nowadays we would create something like this. Uh, we have a condition and um, the condition is very, very localized, right? We have uh, a text that we want to change based on the condition, and that is all that we should be modifying. Um, but in this project, that wasn't the case. This project, this was an AngularJS project, um, and there was a lot of template duplication. So you would overcomplicate an example like what we saw uh, a few seconds ago, where just to update that inner text, um, instead of just updating that section, you would wrap a massive template just to update some property within. And that was something uh, fairly common to see in this in this project. Uh, no shadement. I know that uh, there's different coding styles and things have evolved since then and all of these other factors. So um, what I'm trying to get at is that I became very DOM conscious and UI conscious. So I, I learned all of these techniques to simplify the DOM because to me it is it is important and it is is meaningful work to to clean up that clutter and maybe make things a little bit more focused. 
Um, not just in that sense, but um, I also kind of took it upon myself to be able to uh, refactor other layouts like this um, trivial example you're looking at here. It's a nav bar that has that is stuck on top of the screen uh, and it has some icons on the left, some links on the right, and I would take the opportunity to refactor something like that into something that looks a little bit more, a little bit flatter, a little bit more readable. Um, and that's sort of the the direction that this project took me in. So I, I didn't, I try not to overdo it. Uh, you don't necessarily have to start uh, doing everything in a single div. Uh, you can certainly have multiple elements as needed. I just try to be conscious of what I can remove and what actually has any utility. So uh, what's wrong with having an excessive DOM? Why should you care? Uh, first of all, it impacts performance negatively. Uh, there's plenty of content out there and research that has been done that says if you have a large enough DOM, then your, your browser is going to take a hit in rendering, especially when it comes to uh, CSS applying styles or uh, sections of the DOM needing to be updated. So keeping it lean is certainly going to go a long way to have a performant app. It also affects style inheritance and percentage based calculations. So uh, to make that a short one, if you've ever had to implement something like this, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Um, there's a lot of inheritance in CSS, uh, namely because the C stands for cascade. So these things trickle down and you know, have, an, have an impact. So um, having too many DOM elements can mess with your mental model or even just have things not work uh, as you intend. It also complicates parent child layouts. So if you've worked with Flexbox um, or Grid, for example, you'll know that when you declare a Flex element, all of its children become Flex children. Uh, but that only applies to direct children. So in this case, we have this uh, intruder element that is between our flex parent and the flex children, and that um, breaks the flex relationship. Uh, that kind of scenario, you would want to know uh, how many how many levels of nestedness and how um, your DOM looks is going to have a, a real impact in this type of scenario. And of course, it harms developer experience, not only because of uh, the reasons that we mentioned before, but it's very, very hard to debug something in the browser when you have a lot of DOM elements and you don't know which element is causing your issues, such as overflow and uh, Z index, uh, things going off screen, that sort of thing. So let's talk about the host element and how it comes into play here and what we can do about all these problems that we uh, brought up. First up, we're going to talk about attribute bindings. In this contrived example, a simple component, um, you can see that we have a top level div, and that div is applying a class based on a property. Or in some cases, it could just be applying a class. And that div only exists to apply the top level class such that it applies to all of the all of the elements inside of it. But we don't really need that in a lot of cases. So if you are creating an element, a div or a span or whatever you're using for the sole purpose of applying styles or classes that apply everywhere inside your component, then you can probably get rid of that div and you can place that um, binding in the host property of the component. The host property um, is where you can apply all sorts of modifiers to that host element that we showed. In that example, it was an app button. So instead of adding an extra div, you can apply modifiers like classes or styles directly to that host property using the same syntax that you're familiar with for binding. You could use it for testing to add attributes directly on that element uh, for accessibility or for CSS 
properties. I like using this pattern a lot. I think it's pretty underused, but since you are able to add uh, property CSS property bindings um, since Ivy, I think this is a very, very powerful pattern. Um, and I prefer to keep um, keep all the logic that is related to layouts and styles. If I, I do a lot of work to make sure that it stays within the styles. If you don't need JavaScript to apply some color or size calculation, I, I would rather um, avoid that. Now it's strictly necessary, just uh, you know, nice to know. Um, aside from bindings, you can use it to apply static classes. So anything that's static, you can use that syntax and apply it directly. Ideal for uh, Tailwind, which is seeing a lot of usage today. Um, in that case, you don't need another div to add some Tailwind classes inside your component. You can add them directly to your host element when it makes sense. Same thing with accessibility attributes um, and things like roles for semantic HTML. Uh, if you create a component, you can assign it a role, or that really goes with um, any element. You can use roles on any element, and in certain aspects, it will make the browser treat that element as if it's another, and that could have some interesting effects where uh, we could also cut down on, on the number of uh, elements that we are creating. There is an alternate syntax for this. Um, you may be more familiar with this syntax than the other, um, and it's the host binding decorator, which is, uh, it uses a similar syntax in its property, um, it, only it doesn't have brackets. Um, I recommend not using this uh, and using the host property instead. There's a movement to start updating style guides and um, other material to move away from the decorators and prefer using a host property. I think that's on hold, but it's coming, um, especially if you think about input signals, which were released just yesterday. Um, if you think about it, it's pretty common to combine host bindings with inputs. So you put both decorators on a property and then you have an input that uh, reactively updates those bindings. Um, but unfortunately, uh, the framework is moving away from decorators more and more. So in the case of, uh, like we see here, we have an input, uh, a signal input. It doesn't have a decorator anymore, and you cannot add the host binding decorator to it. So one way to do that would be to create a getter, like we saw in the previous example. Oops. Uh, and the value from the signal, but it would be ideal to just put it on the whole property and use the signal binding from there. Next up, talk about style sheets. In style sheets, if you need to apply CSS or a style directly to the element, we have the whole selector that you see here. So anything put here applies to that whole element only. Uh, the most common pattern you're going to see with regards to this selector is display block. This is a pretty important property that is that's, uh, so important that there's a CLI option to generate your components like this. But this is another scenario where you might need to apply something to the component directly and you don't need a, a wrapper. You can style uh, or modify the layout of your of your host element using the selector. You could also use it as encapsulation. So if you need to disable the native encapsulation or for any other reason, um, you need to restrict the scope of select. You can also nest here if you're using a CFS or combine the selector uh, if you're using CFS. And we'll sort of add like encapsulation, which is pretty common to see and deep. Um, if you still use empty in products, um, it's very important to keep the scope limited. So by combining it with the host collector, you can provide uh, material or whichever other library with uh, affecting the app or the global scope. There's also the host context selector that works based on 
uh, ancestors. So if in this example, you have theme park class anywhere um, in the tree that parent your component, and that will apply conditionally. So you can do a little bit of conditional logic as well um, without having to resort to JavaScript or even find me. This is on CSS. Um, now, event bindings. This is uh, pretty similar to what we talked about earlier. Uh, we have a wrapper div that has only one purpose um, to capture events at the top level. So here we want the click to handle everything inside of that component. So if you have more content and you want everything to trigger this click, this is what we would normally do, right? We wrap it in a div, put the element on there, and that's that. But we also have an alternative for this scenario, since, like I mentioned before, in the host property, um, everything that you normally apply to an element um, can be used. And now we eliminated yet another wrapper component, or rather wrapper element that is not needed. This um, supports all the syntax that uh, attributes and binding support. So if you have a global um, event events like window, or you have event manager plugins, for example, to prevent the fault or run handlers outside of zone or something like that, uh, you can add them here and it'll just work. And again, we have the alternative host listener syntax, which uh, we might be moving away from in the future. So I, I just suggest get, uh, sticking to the host property uh, as much as you can. We also have directive meanings. So another common use case is to be able to apply uh, directive logic all across your component. A very, very common one is CK draft. Let's say we created a card component and we want the whole card to be drivable anywhere that you um, try to select it. And this is the way that you would commonly implement that. Add a relative, the directive, and then that's what you do that. The other alternative was to have the consumer of the component add the directive manually. That's our pro. It's easy to miss, so it's definitely not recommended. Starting with Angular 15, we have the option to apply direct to our host. So that's what uh, the directive composition API is all about. Here we're applying the directive class straight on the component, so we don't need that wrapper anymore, and our component will be draggable. There's an alternative syntax for what we want to forward the directives input or outputs. It can even rename. Here, what we're saying is I need my component to take my data as an input and pass it into CDK drag directive, uh, CDK drag data input. And that all works seamlessly. You could do the same for outputs. And you could also use dependency injection to access those. So if you needed to do anything inside of the class with the directives that you've added, you can inject them and use them as needed. What if I don't need a component? There's plenty of scenarios where um, you might not really need a component and what you need is to augment something else. So in that case, you can go for uh, directive and directives also have the host property. So everything we've talked about so far also works on directives. So if you need to do something simple like handle an event globally, um, you can put that in a directive and make it more reusable and still not needing extra DOM elements to handle existing events or custom events. You could also use it to abstract away dependency injection. Um, like here, we're seeing that we have a re reload directive that will dispatch an action on a store. And that's sort of its own thing, right? We don't have to keep everything in our component and we can um, break things down a little bit more. 
We can also use directives to target existing components. This is especially useful for components we don't own. So if we have a third party library like AG Grid here, um, we declare a directive using the same selector. Note that the selector is using element syntax, so it's not an attribute. It's targeting uh, the same element. So by using uh, a directive like this, when you uh, create a component and or rather consume a component, an AG grid angular component, it's going to still do its own thing. It's going to instantiate that component that you don't own, but it's also going to apply some additional logic and some additional bindings. So in some cases, you might think you need a component that wraps another, but you could just have a directive that um, hooks into it and adds uh, those those extra things that you need. We can even use dependency injection in this scenario as well so that we can do things like um, override default or uh, apply things so that we can improve team developer experience. If I do need a component, this kind of like a circle question. Um, if you need a component, you just do what we are talking about originally. But there's another scenario where what you need might be something that targets an existing element. So it's common to want to extend something, but still retain the browser native functionality. For example, buttons are very, very important and they interact with the browser in unique ways that are very hard to replicate. So what you do in that case is don't place the button. You can use the button directly, use a directive to collect, and then Angular will still manage the component. So when we run this, we create a button element, a my button attribute, and we can manage internally, including uh, bindings, events, the template. So we retain browser and a button functionality and still augment it with whatever we need. This pattern is just heavily in the first three components in material and CDK for that same reason. Um, because native browser functionality and accessibility um, trumps a lot of other functionality. So this is very, very happy to be to do. Um, another uh, kind of common example is to Target links. So in this case, this component with target target links with an H attribute. So anything that's an internal link, basically, then we'll add a couple of attributes so that we ensure it's it's opening a new in the new tab or window. When it comes to structural directives and control flow, um, I also like to keep the duck clean. So in a lot of cases, uh, we wrap things in a different sometimes because it's easier, it's quick to type, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, there are a lot of scenarios where we don't actually need that wrap. If you do, good. If you don't, then you can replace your divs with ng containers or more recently with um, the new control flow syntax. In some cases, you can't replace the control flow syntax, but for that, you still have ng containers. I think that um, if you can avoid having nested elements or an anything that improves um, readability, uh, whether it be while developing or while debugging in the browser, I think those are big wins. And there's some scenarios where you can even inline your structural directives. So if it makes sense for your case, uh, you can also get rid of the container and put the structural directive in your element. But that could have some unintended side effects, so make sure that um, you, you test it properly to make sure the behavior doesn't change. And as the last resort, you can use the display content CSS property. And uh, what the CSS, uh, the, the display contents property does is it will make sure that the browser ignores basically the box model of your element. The box model is um, everything that's related to the positioning of an element. So uh, by using display contents, margin, border, and padding disappear, and you are rendering literally the contents. So 
uh, this element becomes ignored by the DOM for all intents and purposes. And this is kind of like the last resort pattern. Uh, ideally, you would be able to apply this globally as well, so that if you don't need your host elements, you can just uh, choose to ignore them. Uh, but this is also very, very handy, uh, especially when it comes to debugging in the browser. So we'll we'll see that a little bit more of that later. And last but not least, I have a kind of wish list of things that we I, I wish we could do in the framework. Uh, one of them is to be able to render a components template directly to the DOM. So if we go back all the way to the start of the presentation, you know that I mentioned JSX and other frameworks. Um, in some cases, I think it would be good to have that sort of behavior where, where the host element doesn't exist at all. Unfortunately, that uh, the host element is currently crucial to a lot of functionality of the framework, so I don't see this happening anytime soon. And if it does happen, this this would render the whole presentation useless because if you could get rid of the host element, um, you could uh, render things a bit more straightforward with uh, no surprises. Another thing that I would like to see is the ability to render a component as a native element. So we talked about uh, wanting to retain the native element with the button and the anchor tag examples, and that would be ideal. Um, if we could encapsulate a component such that we use it with our own selector, but it would render something native, that would be a nice to have too, uh, in my opinion at least. And finally, um, I think the component decorator is getting a bit cluttered with all the options that we are getting. Uh, we have uh, standalone true, we have uh, imports now inlined in the component, um, we might get a signal flag in here eventually, and we, we're getting a lot of properties. Uh, so if we're moving towards using the host, um, it's going to become cluttered. We're going to have a pretty massive uh, component decorator. So I would love to see uh, kind of a, a host tag or another method of trying to of moving the way in the, um, using in the template, which kind of makes more sense. It ties closer to the mental model, in my opinion, of how we how we apply these two elements. Uh, there's a lot of standing to requesting. Because I think it's from 2017 or something. Um, I don't know. I would it would it would happen at some point. So uh, we've talked about a lot of things, uh, and I would like to uh, try some of them out. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to switch to a fuller window so I can show you and we can walk through some of these improvements. One second. All right, so. Uh, we're going to be looking at the Angular Jira clone project by Trung. Some of you may be familiar with this project, but um, yeah, in, to summarize, it is uh, kind of similar to Jira, um, and it's it's a very well fleshed out project, and we can use it as an example to make some of these cleanups. Um, so let's look at the code here. Uh, if you want to follow along, you can clone the repo. Let me let me find that for you. Um, oops. OK. 
Okay. Here it is. If you want to clone the repo. And what we're going to do is just we're going to look around. Um, we're not going to rehaul the whole project. Um, I'm just trying to find some uh, low hanging fruit where we can uh, apply some of the examples that we talked about. Um, do note that we won't be able to um, use the host directives example because this project is on Angular 13. So let's uh, pick something up and apply those changes. Let's see here. We have a sidebar component. Um, let me bump up the size. Okay. One minute, sorry. So let's take a look at the example. Uh, we're not interested in the inner context of the component, so I'm just going to go ahead and collapse those. As you can see here we have one of the div where the only thing that we are doing is applying some uh, global styles or top level styles to our component. Uh, we can Move those over to the element. Uh, basically applying the same syntax exactly as we're seeing it. So here I'm going to take this over. And. I'm going to let the copilot do the work for me. But this looks exactly like what it looks here. We can take that away. We can take the other one and uh, pass it on as well. And we can get rid of that div now um, because we don't need it. One thing to note is that if your component is not a uh, display block, removing the div will have a side effect. So we remove that top level div we go to the CSS file and we see that there is no host property. So we can add the host property here. And make it display block. And this will mimic the behavior of a div. The div is a block level element and. Um, components or custom elements are inline by default. So if you remove a div and notice a change in the behavior, then this is something that you you would need. OK, so let's go back and see if we broke something. No. Nope. Oh, we did. Yep. OK, so yeah, I mean, you do need to be around with changes and sure that they make sense for your project. But this is more or less the type of modification that you're looking at. Let's see if we can find another example uh, where making those changes doesn't break anything. Uh, and then we will move on to style feed change or something similar. Okay, let's. This Let's see these classes to our post. We go at the block property. Looking good, but hopefully I'm looking at the right thing. 
And so these these are the small wins that you can achieve with um, simplifying your DOM like this. Um, you won't necessarily see performance gains immediately or honestly ever. Um, but this can help with the developer experience when it comes to looking at um, the developer. Usually a lot of noise in here and I'm, I'm looking to clean that up. Let me see if we can find an example that uses a click event. Um, and then we can wrap it up. Okay, there's not a good example of a click, but um, I won't really dive into it so much because uh, the differences would be the same, right? You would move um, the little dip and that component. Um, one other example, I think I scanned it. Uh, so we we couldn't another example, or maybe we could have gone in depth, but um, it gets pretty repetitive. Uh, in most cases, what you want to do is the same thing: uh, remove wrappers, move things to the host, um, and try to structure the layout so that you can use um, like uh, grid and flex to create layouts without needing wrappers or other things to. Position your um, to position your your layouts. So going over all of again, we have host bindings. We have host select, which is for CSS. Uh, host context for styles based context. Host listener for events. Host directives for directive composition. Uh, directives or component with alternative selectors, so to target um, existing components or native, uh, native elements. Uh, you can take and control flow and display content. So we have a lot of tools available to clean up our DOM, uh, make our Angular developer experience a little bit better. Um, hopefully pick up some performance gains along the way. Uh, that's going to be that's all I have for today. Um, all of the links and the references of what I used for the presentation are in the QR code. Uh, if anything is out of date, please let me know. Uh, it's so links are also here, so feel free to connect. Um, we can chat about this or anything else that you might be interested in. Uh, so thank you so much again uh, to the Angular Kenya community and for the hosts for welcoming me here. Okay, um, thank you so much for that session. Uh, apologies if you come uh, off as a silent audience. We were following your content. It was quite interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you. This is, yeah. So does anyone have a question? Um, please just feel free to unmute yourself and just ask, or if you have a comment that you can give. Ah, Wayne, yes, feel free to unmute yourself. Thank you. Uh Thank you, Joy. Thank you, Raphael. Uh, I think mine is more of a comment. 
Uh, I've learned something new today uh, with regards to having the host inside the directive. Uh, I was mostly used to doing it on the component level, but on the directive, that's a new thing that I've learned. So definitely having that as a key takeaway for me. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Any any other comment or question? Yes, Alex, just unmute yourself and then. Sure. Uh, uh, hi, good evening. Here it's evening. Uh, hi, Rafael. Hi, Angela Kenya team. Um, thank you for your spending your time with us here. Uh, I have a question. Um, probably this is something out of what you've discussed, but I think it fits in somewhere. Um, can you be able to do something like a, a decorator which decorates um, the root component, like let's say your app component and any other component that you add to the application, um, whether it's through a route or anything, can you be able to pick up elements or any other thing inside the entire application using a decorator um, on the main app component and probably style it or do some stuff to it? I'm, I'm thinking of something like, um, you don't have to hunt for every other input or element inside the entire application. You just put a decorator on the main app component and it will pick out any child elements that come along when you navigate to any other place in the application. Yeah, um, thank you, Alex. That is a great question. Um, unfortunately, I don't think what you what you are asking is possible because uh, mm -hmm. Decorators are managed by the framework um, and everything is compiled ahead of time. Um, so anything that is not um, first party, or at least when it comes to decorators specifically, um, they, they won't be uh, picked up because it needs to be statically analyzable. Um, the only kind of thing that you can uh, configure, and it's because it's a CLI or Angular JSON option, is the uh, display block property. So um, in that case, it's that's a um, that's a schematic. So it's kind of a different thing, but it's actually as as far as you can get with something like that. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Because what I was trying, I was trying to use probably uh, the view child and see whether I can be able to inject it inside a decorator and pick up. Maybe what I was trying is uh, make some uh, form elements read only, but now my 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 thinking was I can use a decorator, put it in app component, and then uh, probably some way somehow inject uh, a use view child to view children or some other uh, way to pick up elements. But if it's not possible, okay, that's uh, that's okay. All right, thank you. Sure, anytime. Any other question, comments, shout outs or something? Would we'd like to say hi to Raphael. Uh, okay. Um, Raphael, thank you for the session. We hope that you might be able to join us in Kenya for an event um, very soon, maybe, and bring your friends. <laughs> we'll send you an invite. Yes, Jessa. Uh, so, Raphael, could I also ask uh, what if we use an element ref uh, with together with the directive now to alter the way Alex was asking? Uh, to alter like inputs or elements in the DOM. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you would be able to get element refs, um, but you would have to be very, very careful to not go on infinite loop or something. Um, 
a custom renderer is another alternative. Um, there is a, a great talk by Chao Tran um, where he goes into the details of how he built a custom renderer for um, his Angular 3 library. Um, and that, that gives you a little bit more flexibility into handling elements as they're created instead of trying to reach in and, and grabbing the references as they are created. So that, that's one possibility that I think would be um, performant and much more flexible. Uh, could you say, type the name of the person you just said so that I can? Uh, for the, that talk? Yes, yes, please. Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll pick it up and share it. Okay, thank you. Yes, Peter. Hey, hello, guys. I hope you're doing great. So, my name is Peter, and just my questions about this uh, input thing. Like, okay, okay there's this uh, aspect of uh, passing this tech, for example, this, uh, I mean, just passing something from a parent component or child component using the input and all those decorators. Maybe now that you're experienced, what would you advise somebody? Because I do see people saying that signals, you can just like, okay, use signal and then things are just reactive in your whole angular application. So may I know if there's some sort of a trade-off if you kind of just like approach it that way, not using the input, maybe there are different things like that. Um, so uh, what what you're asking is uh, within the scope of of the uh, applying styles and such to a component. I'm I'm sorry. Could you uh, go back a little bit and explain it again? Oh, okay. Not really. Um, like basically, I know the whole meeting was about things to do with the directives because that is what I saw you. Anyway, I was like getting in and getting out. So my question is, I know Angular is like always, if you're maybe to pass uh, some data from the parent component to maybe child component, you can use those input decorators and things like that. But then there's this thing of the signals that has like just come around and maybe if you even have some value somewhere that has changed maybe in a parent component and you are maybe calling it in some sort of a template of a child component, then it just like reactively updates over there. So I'd like to know if there are some sort of trade-offs and things like that. If that is that is what I'm asking this guy. Yeah. Um, well, it, it's going to depend on what you need them for. In some cases, you might want to put your signals in a in a service instead of passing them around. Um, with uh, signal inputs, also have. Uh, um, you have tools at your disposal now to drive state. So you could, uh, when you're passing those inputs around, you could choose to do something else with it. Um, I'm not sure I haven't uh, been exposed to signals too much yet. I'm on a kind of project or a few projects. Uh, and I think there should be, there shouldn't be much change in that line of reason about when you when you pass data down. Uh, regardless of whether you're using signals or not. I'm not sure if that answers your question. Kind of. Okay, okay, thank you. Yep. Is there any other person with a question? Or comment? Um, I, I have the link for the uh, the talk I referenced before, but can't set any, any message up here. Is there an alternative you prefer to uh, get that to you? Could you, Wayne, how do we go about that? 
Uh, you can definitely share it with me uh, or share it just via the Angular Kenya e email and uh, we'll definitely also paste it up with the, with the video once we upload it as well as part of the resources. Okay, great. Okay. Um, I guess there are no more questions. So... As I was saying earlier, Rafael, you're welcome for future physical events in Kenya. We will be good hosts. We promise you that. Um, <laughs> otherwise, thank you so much. It's been an educative session. I have learned a lot. Um, and thank you for, for all of you attendees for attending. Um, and see you next time. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Rafael.